world. Here, let me tell you what Jesus said about religious people. <laughs> and you know, just so you understand what I'm talking about, Jesus didn't die so we could have a religion. I don't care if it's Catholic or Baptist or Methodist or Presbyterian or Pentecostal or Charismatic or whatever it is. Which even all that really is silly. I mean, you know, we don't need to be divided up in a bunch of groups with all of our own little special names on it. I mean, we're the body of Christ. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. Well, you know, Sister Joyce, I heard you're one of those charismatic folks and there's a possibility you speak in tongues and I just don't agree with that. Well, then fine, just don't do it. We can love each other anyway. Well, who's right? I want to know which one of these religions is right. None of them are 100% right. Not mine, not yours, not anybody else's. We're doing the best we can to understand the best that we can. And as long as we've got the important stuff right, amen? People argue over stuff that don't even make any sense, and you don't even want me to get off on that. Jesus didn't die so we could all have a religion. He died so we could have a personal relationship with him through Christ. And so he could teach us how to love. So religious people are people who go through the motions, but it's just all outward stuff. So in Matthew 23, this is what Jesus said about religious people. Religious people tell other people what to do, but they don't do it themselves. They place heavy burdens on other people and won't lift a finger to help them. They do all their works to be seen and admired, and they don't do them out of love. They love places of honor, the best seats in church, titles, and positions. Verse 11, however, in Matthew 23, says, He who is greatest among you must be your servant. Jesus goes on in Matthew 23 to say they are pretenders, they mistreat widows, and pray long prayers while they're doing it. Their terrible example leads others into the same behavior. They tithe on every tiny little thing that they have. He says every leaf and mint. But they neglect to do right. They neglect mercy and they neglect justice. They look good on the outside, Jesus said, but on the inside they're filled with grasping self-indulgence. I would have made a chief Pharisee back in my religious days. Oh my gosh. I was so stinking religious, and I had an attitude about everybody. I would go to church on Sunday, and then me and my other Christian friends would go and have breakfast and sit there and gossip about the pastor. Ooh, I suppose you've never done that. <laughs> well, did, Mabel, did you see that he's got a new car? Well, I tell you what, I'm just, I just think that's just not right. Don't be jealous of what anybody's got if you don't want to do what they did to get it. Amen. And then Jesus, I keep saying Jesus said, because this isn't my opinion, this is what he said. They look good on the outside, but inside they're filled with grasping self-indulgence. They focus on gnats and swallow camels. They're whitewashed tombs full of dead men's bones. <laughs> Outwardly, they seem to be just and upright, but inwardly, they're filled with pretense. Now, I refuse to be a phony Christian. And the only way that I know to actively, aggressively come against this is to make sure that I'm walking in love and displaying the fruit of the Spirit. I believe that we are known by our fruit. Not just by our church attendance, but we are known by our fruit. And when people know that you claim to be a Christian, they are going to watch you to see if you've got the goods. Amen? Yeah, you're still not sure how happy you are about this, but that's okay. I know what I'm getting into every time I teach this message, so. Amen. Okay, let me give you an example. The first time I taught on love, I was teaching a long eight-part series on love. I was going to take 1 Corinthians 13 apart, teach one on patience, one on goodness, one on kindness. I was now the new love guru, and I was going to teach on love. So I'm in the middle of my eight-part series on love. Dave lets me off one day at the McDonald's restaurant 
We'd come back from traveling. I was going to go in, get us a booth. There were only booths on the perimeter of McDonald's, so there was only about six or seven of them. And we like to sit in the booth, you know, because they're more cushy on your tushy. And so we wanted to sit there, and we'd just come back from traveling, and I love for the sun, you know, because when I'm tired, I like the sun. And we would go to the post office, pick up our five or six pieces of mail, however much we had back then, you know, wanting to get some kind of encouragement that, you know, what we were doing made any sense at all. And so there was a crowd going into McDonald's. He said, you run on in there and get us a seat. So I started in, and I saw one booth over here, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw another guy headed for that same booth. <laughs> and so I had a split second, I mean just a split second, to follow the Holy Spirit who was telling me, let him have it. <laughs> Love prefers others. But I wanted it. <laughs> and sad to say, I was preaching on love but not walking in it yet, so I put it in high gear and walked in. <laughs> got the booth, sat down. The guy came over to the lady that was sitting at this very booth right in front of me. He knew her, and he said to her, there's no places left to sit, can I sit with you? And she said, yeah, she beat you, didn't she? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, now here's the really bad part. And some of you have seen me tell this on TV, but the really bad part was the man was crippled. <laughs> he was walking with a cane. So I was preaching my eight-part series on love, racing a crippled man in McDonald's. Okay, now come on, now do you know what I'm talking about? I can't get you guys to listen to anything if I don't tell stories on myself. Now the Bible says that love prefers other people. <laughs> I wasn't preferring him, I was racing the poor cripple guy. And the thing that was amazing was the woman knew it. She saw me doing it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me tell you, I've done some stuff that I'm not real proud of and it's, it, it, a, a lot of it's just little stuff like that. But see, here, here's the thing that is so important to me. Yes, I want you to go to church and I want you to behave in church, but more than anything, I want people to get out in the world and show the world Jesus. By being kind and being patient and being loving and doing things for people, and especially doing things for people that don't deserve it and won't understand it. They just won't get it. And if you keep it up long enough, they'll begin to believe that maybe you do have something after all that's real and genuine and that they need. That's the price we pay. That's the price we pay. That's why when the mother of Zebedee's son said, I want my two sons to sit, one on your right hand and one on your left when you come into your kingdom, he said, you don't know what you're asking. Are you willing to drink the cup that I drink? Are you willing to be baptized with the baptism with which I'm baptized? I believe that God wants to baptize people in love. I, want, I think that he wants us to be walking, talking, breathing love. And that has nothing to do with being selfish and self-centered. Amen? Amen? Now, let's talk for a few minutes about this principle of love doesn't keep a record of wrongs. How many of you would like to talk about that for a little bit? Okay. If you're going to keep a record of anything, keep a record of all the good things that people do. Write it down and go over the list every day. But if you write down a record of what somebody does wrong, erase it. You've seen that thing maybe that we show when we do altar calls. If you were here last night, you saw it. Well, we have every year and a person sinned and sinned and sinned and sinned and sinned and then in 2013 they received Christ and then one by one all those other years were erased. See, when we walk in Christ, 
We have to erase the wrongs that people do and every day give them a fresh start. And one of the things that really helps that is to believe the best. I'm just going to use Dave as an example because he lets me, okay? Not because he's... I mean, Dave is actually great. I remember years ago when he and I would get into an argument and I would start bringing up everything from the day we got married. And he said to me one day, where do you keep all that stuff? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that first week after we got married and your whole family was coming over and you left me to go out and hit golf balls. And I, he's like... <laughs> We've been married eight years. You, you hung on to that for eight years? <laughs> but now it really helps me. Let's just say that I say, well, you know what? I believe Dave's heart was right. I don't believe Dave really understood how his actions affected me. I don't believe Dave would hurt me on purpose. Maybe Dave doesn't feel well today. Or maybe, just maybe, God is dealing with him about something. You never can tell. <laughs> Negative mental record keeping causes bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness, and touchiness. An example of negative record keeping. Well, Dave watches sports all the time, and I don't like sports. And probably when we get home from this conference tomorrow, Dave is going to go play golf on Sunday and leave me by myself. I used to get mad about that. Now I'm like, yes, time alone. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So much happens as you grow. <laughs> Dave always corrects me on details when I'm trying to tell stories. Drives me nuts, but he doesn't stop it. Dave talks all the time when we're trying to watch TV. He's like a running commentary on whatever we're trying to watch. Well, that's dumb. Well, why did they do that? Well, that makes no sense at all. Well, oh, th this is what's going to happen. Watch this. This is what's going to happen. And then he'll ask me questions about it. I'm like, I haven't seen it either. Thanks for listening. Learn the value of walking in love with today's special marriage offer, which includes a CD and a DVD resource. This package is available now as either a CD and a DVD set or digital download for a donation of any amount in U.S. funds. And we do accept all major credit cards. You can order today's offer from our website at JoyceMeyer.org or you can call us toll free at 1-800-789-0089. Again, the number is 1-800-789-0089.